A quantum leap is the experience of space in order to collapse time that it takes to get to your destination. Here at the Mystic and the Magician podcast, we are going to teach you how to do that, the best ways to do it, and the most fulfilling results that you could experience. Hi, welcome to the Mystic and the Magician podcast. I'm your host, Spring, and I'm here with my co-host, Cassandra, and today we are talking about manifestation and creation. Yes, so... (laughs) This is really cool, and this is like one of the really awesome spiritual topics that everyone wants to know about. They want to know how to manifest. They want to know how to get everything they want. They want to make their vision board. (laughs) Isn't it crazy? And I mean, it's so funny because I always start like at the beginning of the year, New Year's. I always have like a big old manifestation party at my house for the the whole year, and I'm going to do this, this, and this. But then I find that like the first of the month, I also like rethink and try to reevaluate everything. And then I do it like on Mondays. So it's really funny. Like I'm all about trying to like grab hold of brand new ways. (laughs) Yeah. So here's the thing though. And we've experienced this a couple times is you can get on this role with manifesting and get in this space of pure creation. And then what can happen is you can have things surface that you need to heal or release new layers to you of limiting beliefs. And you have to keep releasing as you go. Like you can't, just stay in a nonstop space of manifesting without doing the shadow work behind it. No. And it's funny, like that shadow work will come out of nowhere that needs to be done. Like you think, Oh, I did so much work. I paid all this money for coaching and I spent months and months and months getting rid of all this garbage. And you think, Oh, I'm good. And then out of nowhere, you're like landslided. (laughs) You know, I had a friend that used to say, if you are not working on your future, if you're not going forward, if you're not building, then you're regressing. There is no stay the same because your brain automatically regresses to old behaviors and comfortable behaviors over time. There's no just staying for very long, at least like you can pull it off for a couple of weeks or a couple of months, but you'll eventually regress to like old circumstances. And that's, we've literally experienced that before. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. It's, it's, that's, that's how it works. I mean, it is. Um, I was working months ago on my self image issues and I had some really good growth in that area, but it's not something I maintained. I was like, Oh, this is happy. I'm going to stay here. I'm comfortable now. And now, now I get to do it all over again. And I'm not starting from scratch. It's just, I stopped. I went stagnant and a bunch of self issues came up. So now I get to deal with that this week. So I think that it's important to know, okay, so body issues is actually really important. And I think that it's important to note too, that we've discovered that at least for us and a couple people that we know, I don't believe this could go for everyone, but with the issues of body image, oftentimes the body is actually your image of the self. So the self judgment that you have, the guilt and shame that you carry gets taken out on your image of your body in one way or another by how you eat, how you treat it, you know, those things. Yeah. So like if you have a lot of like emotional damage that you've suffered, you'll find that um, we found that with us and with some of our clients, we took it out on our physical body parts. Um, One thing that's for me, I absolutely detest my breath. Like, they're gigantic. They're huge. They've been huge since sixth grade. They called me Dolly Parton's daughter. Like, (laughs) these things have been a menace my whole life. And um, that's the first thing I do every morning. I get up and look in the mirror, and I'm like, I hate hate my boobs. (laughs) So, okay, so that's an affirmation. That's actually an affirmation. So when you're manifesting, you're manifesting from a place of your subconscious mind. Just like we channel spirit through our subconscious, we connect to all of these dimensions and realms through our subconscious, and you train your brain through your subconscious to create your reality. And when you wake up and you say, I hate my body, that's an affirmation to your subconscious. Yes. And what happened is I kept going up in bra size. (laughs) (laughs) I literally learned how to manifest boobs. So. <laughs> In case you ever want to know how. To. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> but, but so, okay. So for manifesting, like we're going to talk about all the ways to manifest my, um, my favorite one. And I've talked about this a lot is intention setting with candles. Okay. And what this does, this does so much for me. It does so freaking much for me. Intention setting with candles. So I actually utilize my physical sensory system to train my subconscious mind on what I want it to manifest. So when I sit down in the morning, I play some Zen meditation music on YouTube. I burn some sage. I trigger my smell sense and I light the candle and I visualize what I want to happen. And I visualize that it's coming to me right now. I don't say in the future because then it's just going to stay in the future. I don't say I already have it. So then my brain can knows to like bring it in. I say it's happening right now. And what this does for me on such a personal level is I can actually set intention for a post that's going to resonate with someone to, you know, to channel what I want to give to the world for that day. And I'll get present in the moment and I'll start doing work or chores around the house and the answer will just come to me. Yes. Yeah. That I always start first by um, decluttering my space. That is what I'm working on today because we are, I'm setting course for like some massive transformations on stuff. So I am decluttering my house today and throwing 99% of it away so I can make room for new stuff. And then yeah, that's so important. No one talks about that, but that is so important. Like, let's talk about that for a minute. If you don't have space in your life for what you want, you cannot have it. You can't, there's no room for it. Even if it's like, if it's weight loss, you know what? Go into your cupboard and throw out that crap that doesn't belong in there. Get rid I, of the nasty stuff. I had a friend that wanted to date. She wanted to find her soulmate. And she had been single for years, God, like eight years. And she was ready. She was ready to start dating again. But she wasn't really because her son and her still slept in the same bed together. And if she would bring a guy in, then her son would have animosity towards that guy. There was literally no room in her attention to bring in a guy where someone else wouldn't feel lack or be affected. So you have to start making room for what you want. That is so important. I'm so glad you brought that up. Yeah. And I always start with that. And I do do intention candles. Um, I, I think it's important to just, because if you just say it in your head, I'm a physical person. I want to physically touch the candle. I want to physically know that I have set the intention. So that's, that's me. I need the candle. I physically know it. And I mean, I have these ones. These are not House of Intuition, which we usually use. This big one is. My big one's House of Intuition. But I lit some other ones, and I just set my intentions over these candles because they needed to be burned. I needed to get rid of them to declutter. And I lit those on fire. I charged all my crystals. I made sure I was setting intentions over those. Um, I've got a brand new journal that I'm going to start using for this transformation. Yes! I actually go on five and below and order these really cute $5 geo journals. And I have so many of them filled up and I had to tell Kevin, like if anything happens to me and I die, only read this journal with the moon on it because nothing else is going to make sense. Cause I just write my readings in here. Like I have like a girl's name and then pencil and then car. Like it's all of my spirit images. I really like that. You've asked him not to read them. Brian is like super, um, He's a hoarder oh. and he's very, very, very emotionally attached to everything. I'm afraid if I died, he would read my crap. So I basically designated one. I was like, if I die, like this is the thing with all my passwords in it. And this is the thing with all of the information I've acquired in it. So like specifically, if I learn something new or if I'm experimenting on something new or if we're running a beta test that I think other people could benefit from, I put it in one specific book. But everything else is a mess. It's totally random thoughts and ideas and everything else. Yeah. So I'm like, you can just burn those. They're not going to make sense. No one's, if you're trying to read them to like learn about me, you're not going to learn anything you're going to leave with more questions than you came with <laughs> <laughs> no i mean there i see another manifesting technique that i use is what i call my my bullshit journal and it's writing everything down as if it's happening currently yes it's just like my whole journal full of bullshit he's gonna get that and read that and he's gonna be like 
my wife was crazy. She was crazier than I thought. <laughs> yeah. So, but that's a good one. And I think it's important to note that when you write in cursive, it actually like activates both sides of the brain. And that's what you want to do. You want to get everything activated. You want to break down that wall between your conscious and your subconscious mind, which examples of this are like autopilot things. Like when you take a shower, you do the same things in the shower every time. So you might have like more creative ideas or thoughts in the shower of what you should do with your life. And the same thing as with like when you're driving and then you come to and you're like, I don't know if I ran three red lights, like those <laughs> little autopilot moments. I'm yeah. starting to do this while I clean now, which I think is cool because I'll put on some music while I clean and I do the same kind of routine every time I clean. And so I'm starting to have those moments. But when you set intentions in the morning to receive answers, those moments through your day are the moments when they will come to you. Yes. Yes. And then stop and write it down because. Oh yeah. Write it down for write sure. I have not been doing that lately and I'm losing a lot of messages. We have a client that keeps like a journal in her bathroom for the shower ideas and oh she like God. hops out really quick and <laughs> writes it down. That's what I need to do. Um, so affirmations too. Yes. It's really similar to intention setting, but this is more for reprogramming conditioning beliefs. Like you saying, I hate my boobs, like maybe starting to say like, I love my body. Things like that are like reprogramming your brain to start like when you're told something over and over again, you start to believe it. And it's like right. telling yourself. Yes. Cause I you would, have to believe you I have hate, to believe. I hate affirmations. I hate saying them. It, I just like feel stupid. So I am going to do that. I'm going to add that to my massive transformation. It's hard in the beginning with the affirmations because you don't believe it. Right. It's like someone like <laughs> a good example of this is like the people that are like kind of like hesitant about like Scientology and then over time they get convinced to join Scientology, you know, because they've been right. told the same thing over and over and over again that they're like, oh, well, maybe this person's not wrong. Well, you do that with yourself. So in the beginning, you're like, why the freak am I saying this? It doesn't like I don't believe it. But in order to manifest, you actually have to believe from the bottom oh, of your heart. You have to believe to the very, very core of your heart that this is yours. And you this is yours. Not even like you deserve it, but that it is yours. And we were actually talking about that because you look at the work that we're doing and you see a lot of like politicians and a lot of like greedy horrible people that are getting rich and you're like well if i have to do all this to get rich why am i poor and these bad horrible people are making all of this money and that's honestly the core of what it is we learned that they believe that they deserve it yeah they and believe at the bottom of their core that it's theirs and it's theirs for the taking and so when you believe that when you believe it to the bottom of your core that it's yours then it happens like i knew that financially we needed more money and I knew that we could get more money so I started buying lottery tickets and um, started focusing just on drawing more money into our household and my husband got a raise and I was like you know I did that wrong because I knew that he could make more money but I wasn't focusing on myself making more money right you were focusing on the house bringing it into the house right, right. yeah so that's another thing is for some people, and this is like a human design thing, and I'm not super familiar about the actual aspect of this and in what human designs, but I'm sure you can do a quick Googler and find out. But for some people, you have to be really specific. And I am one of those people that I manifest super specifically. If I say something vague, it's going to come in a way that I didn't really want it to come because I wasn't specific enough. Right. Well, it's funny. When I first started learning about manifesting, they were, everyone will tell you, don't control the universe. Don't multitask the universe, you know? And I was like, okay, so I won't be so specific. But like you said, there are some manifestors that have to be specific. And I am a specific manifester. Me too. And so like for my car, when I wanted to get a new car, not only did I have to make room and get rid of my old car, I did that. I didn't have a car for a couple months. I literally gave my mom my car and I was like, I'm going to get a new car. But I was visualizing exactly 
the size and colored car that I ended up getting. I had it in my head. Like it was a blue car and it was this size and it was this good on gas. Like I got excited about all the little details that I wanted in this car, including how much I wanted to buy it for. And that's the exact car that I got. And I ended up getting it with like $500 down. It was ridiculous. That's awesome. Yeah. When, um, I needed a new car and I, I don't know. I was like, I was mad. I was so mad at my husband. So to get back at him, I wanted a sports car, even though we had four kids. I was like, no, I want a sports car. We have an SUV. I want a sports car that will be my car. So I sent him pictures of a white car and I said, it has to have leather interior. It has to have a sunroof. It has to have, you know, all this stuff, this navigation system. Well, when he bought my car, he put all of these things in my car, but he bought the wrong car. I sent him a Camaro, <laughs> but I wasn't specific. Yeah. So I did not get the Camaro. You got a nice sporty car, though. I love it. It's great. It fits three kids in the back seat, which is who still lives at home are my three, my three kids. But mm -hmm. I still want a Camaro. I learned how to drive a stick shift in a Camaro, and I, it's like non-logistic. I just want to drive a stick Camaro. I don't know why that's so hard for him to get. <laughs> <laughs> that was actually my dad's first car, and he talks about it a lot. Didn't it have, like, a T-top back in the yes! day? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They were so cool. And my mom gave me a car that was a stick shift. It was a nasty, nasty car. But my best friend drove a stick. And I was, like, awful. I had no idea how to make this car move. It was terrible. And he took me out and taught me in his Camaro. So I was like, no. That's, <laughs> that's what I want. Oh, well. So I think it's important um, to mention, like, fear as you're going forward, because fear has been one that's coming up for a lot of people. And a lot of people are afraid to take the steps in order to create the life you want. And so if you're creating a life for yourself, you have to take the actions. You have oh, to plant yeah. seeds in you order to be led. Sit on your butt and be like, the universe will make me thin. Well, maybe she will if she takes your job away and you can't buy groceries. <laughs> yeah yeah you gotta take action so it doesn't happen like that because that is something that happens like I wanted a new house and the house I was renting actually got foreclosed on because I wasn't taking any actions so you have to be really careful about that like if you want to manifest something and you're not taking actions you you will be forced into it in ways that you don't want so it's super important to take the actions and ditch the fear like a lot of people are afraid of the three main things that I've noticed people are afraid of is a the unknown b of failing and c of not being enough where does afraid of the hard work come in at which one <sighs> I don't no, think anyone's I'm, afraid of working hard I am afraid of all the hard work like it's not gonna I have okay I have a goal to lose almost 100 pounds that's that's so much that's so 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 much weight and that's so, going to take me over a year to accomplish. You that's have to lot. break it down. Yes, I know. But yeah. the reason that I haven't started yet is because I know it's going to be a lot of hard work. And I am, like, not wanting to commit to the hard work. But maybe it doesn't have to be so hard. Maybe hard is what you're creating it by thinking it's going to be hard. No. Like, and that going to take a lot of hard work. <laughs> it's going to take, no, it's going to take a lot of willpower. Hard, I done it <laughs> it's going to take a lot of willpower. And that's where I get messed up with like the weight loss journey is that my willpower, like, like one day I'll wake up and I'll be like, I love my body. I love my curves. I'm fine. I really want to eat a burrito right now and some tacos and have a beer. And then other days I'm like, I hate my body. I really want to change it. And those days I do really good. But on the days I love my body, I don't care. And then it throws me off. And like, it's the willpower and the constant, like the constant mental effort, not so much the actual physical work, but the mental effort, especially because of you having diabetes. So you have to account for a lot more than typically someone would have to account for. 
Like for me, I just need to put down the fork and make a grilled chicken salad. And for you, you have to account for sugars and things like that. Right. And sugar dips and yeah, you hit cardio and then your sugar drops and your body goes into starvation mode. Right. So here it is. I'm eating the right amount of calories. I'm doing the right amount of exercise, but because I didn't maintain my sugar and it dipped, my body goes into starvation mode, which makes you gain weight. Right. Then I get frustrated and then I'm like, this is hard. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. It's more mentally taxing than anything else. Yeah. But I do want to touch on, I want to touch on these three fears for everyone that's struggling with them. So first of all, fear of the unknown. Fear of the unknown is biological. It's in your brain. So becoming conscious is not just going through this healing process and developing your psychic senses, but it's also becoming conscious of your body's primal instincts and being able to combat them consciously. And fear of the unknown is a primal instinct to keep you safe. So like in the primal like caveman days, we were afraid of these certain primal things like the dark because our predators could easily access us that could see better at night. Um, Fear of the unknown. If you ventured out and didn't know, you couldn't predict what was going to happen. It felt unsafe. And so people kind of tried to stay in general areas. That's why there were different tribes all over the place because in those areas, they stayed because they knew the land, they knew you know, there are surroundings. Um, so when we feel this fear of the unknown, it's a primal instinct and we can actually tell our brain, like, look, I've got this. Like you've got it. You always have a choice. You can move forward with a choice. You can stop at any time you want. You can go back at any time you want. And the worst thing that's going to happen is you try and fail. And the fear of failing, I love this one. I love this one so much. Fear of failing makes me so, like, kind of giggly because we always picture failing as the end. Right? And it's not. It's, like, the beginning because you get to try again. We always picture – we never picture what comes after failing. No. We never picture what comes after it. Like, honestly, you've only failed if you stopped, if you stopped trying. Right. What even is failing? Yeah, learning. You can't fail, actually, unless you just give up. Right. Because if you notice that it's not working, you haven't failed. You no try another way. Fail. Right. I always, when something doesn't work out, I don't even picture it as failing anymore. I don't even use that word. I used to. I used to be afraid of that, but I don't even use that word anymore because I'm at this point where I realize that if something doesn't work out, the universe is just taking me another way that's better for me, that I don't even know is better for me. Like when relationships don't work out, friendships, business ventures, anything, when none of that works out, it's because I'm not supposed to go that way. There's a better way for me where I'm going to be more successful and more happy and more surrounded by my people. Yes. So I don't even use that word anymore because failing isn't real. Right. It's not real. Nope. Like I've had jobs that I've been really good at (laughs) that I've walked out of And I didn't say I failed. I've quit a job with nothing lined up before, and I never for a minute thought I failed. I was just like, no, this isn't my way. I'm going to go this way. Yeah. Yep. And then the other one is not being enough. That one gets me in um, probably deeper than any of them because that's like – where I feel like I've let others down. Depending on any anybody. If it's like a new program we're launching and I'm concerned about it, I'm like, what if we let clients down? Or what if I let you down? Or what if I let Brian down? It's That's where my fear of comes in. You know what's so that. funny about that, though, is I've actually learned this in my relationship with Kevin over the last couple weeks. Um, because there's been a couple ventures that I've gone out and tried to do and tried to make stuff happen. And it didn't work out. And so I came back to him. And I said, you know, I'm sorry that that didn't work out. Kevin didn't give a shit. I know. That Brian was in my head. Either. He's like one of the most laid back, easygoing people. And yet I'm always afraid of letting him down. You! 
I'm always afraid of like, oh my gosh, I need to do that because I don't want to let you down. I know. And it's so funny because I don't care what you do. Right. <laughs> I, I literally like, I care what you do, but not to that extent. Like, I'm just right. like, go spring. Like, you got this. <laughs> like, Right. But I feel like if I don't, you know, like some days when you're just waiting for inspiration, because you can't just post willy nilly. You always have to have it's inspired. Oh, no, you can't force. People can so, feel that. And so, like, if I'm not getting one, I start to freak out. And I'm like, you know, and I start to, like, oh, my gosh, I got to get something. I got to get something. And I'm like, wait a minute. If I force it, it's going to feel forced. It'll look like someone held a knife to my post. <laughs> but then if I don't, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I don't want her to think that I'm not trying today. <laughs> Dude, I don't even, like, pay attention. That's so funny. I know. But I don't. I I really don't even pay attention. That's why we are a partnership because you're like, you know, and I don't want to be like, you know, not. But, you know, I've felt like that with you before. There's been weeks where I've done very minimal and I'm like, oh, my God, spring's not going to think I'm working. Right. See, and I never care. I know. I always know you have something else you're addressing and, you know, it's not like that's why there's two of us. But yeah. Yeah funny like I do I'm like I start to like oh my gosh I gotta do this because I don't want to let her down <laughs> and you don't I literally don't care <laughs> like I think that we're just I, I it's so funny it's so funny this um this like not being enough thing because yeah. really <clears throat> really you know I mean and we know at this point the world is really your mirror and really the only person you feel you are meeting the expectations of like, like they're just your expectations of yourself. Right. They're not mine. Like, I don't care. They're not Brian's in the world. It's always the hardest from yourself. Yeah. Because we are our own worst critics. Self judgment. Self judgment. That was huge for you. Like a few weeks ago. You yeah. Said, hey, look, I figured out what judgment is. It's just this. And I channeled that from a tree. Yeah. Like I went hiking with one of our clients and she started talking about something and she said that someone that she knew was very judgy and I, we were talking about frequency and I put my hand on a tree. And when she said that, I was like, Oh, self judgment. It's not even them. It's you. It's you. <laughs> You're like, I'm not enough. I'm not pulling my own weight in this business. I need to get a post up. You're over here. Like, I love my caramel mocha. This is great. <laughs> I know. I'm over here like, I got a pumpkin spice latte today. How's your day going? Like, <laughs> and I'm over here like, oh my gosh, she's going to, I don't want her to feel like she has to carry all the weight and I don't want her to think that I'm not trying. <laughs> and you're over here, pumpkin spice latte. <laughs> I know. It's really like that because it's really ourself. It's really us judging ourselves for not doing enough work. It's really our, us judging ourselves, and, you know, other people's opinions other people's opinions of what you do. If you don't feel that way about yourself, they don't bother you. Right. See, that was something that came up for me last, I don't know when it was. I posted a post about Lilith because Lilith is the dark moon in, ast in astrology, which I love. Cause it's and like, Lilith is also misunderstood. Yes. Yes. I, I, and you know, it's, it's honestly, it's a mystical figure from the Bible, you know, well, anyhow, quote but, unquote mythology, uh, right? <laughs> well, I posted this post about Lilith being the dark side of the moon and in astrology and how it is your deep, dark secrets. And you can even find out in astrology, which um, your deep, dark secrets in, in sex. Like I read my husband's and found out he wanted to have sex in a public place. And when I asked him that, <laughs> I was like, do you want to do that? Do you have a fantasy about that? And he's like, no. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how Kevin would respond. Right. No, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> it's funny because I posted this thing about it. And this guy came to me because he's like, you know, if you really want to run for public office, you can't post any of this stuff that you're posting because people will think you're a witch or that you're crazy. Or you can post it and you'll get more support because you're actually being fucking honest for once. And I was like, I was like, you know what? There's a pedophile and a convicted felon and some other people on our, on our. Dude, if Donald Trump can say grab her by the pussy and get elected, then <laughs> I'm fucking, I, I'm voting for you for talking about Lilith. <laughs> and, 
And I was, I was like, oh my gosh. But yet what happened is I got offended. I screenshot it so that I could send it to you so that I could bitch about it. <laughs> and you know what happened? Instantly, I never got that screenshot. You must have turned it around. You didn't because you know what I realized is I was like, you know what? I'm mad because I knew this. I knew that if I was going to run for public office, I was going to have to do something different about my business and about my personality. And I am struggling with, do I just say, you know what? I'm tired of this one woman running unopposed. So I'm going to stand up and do something. And if you don't like who I am and what I am, don't vote for me. But at least I did something. Dude, I think that you should. I think you should totally be authentic. Like, look at the authentic people that have run. Bernie and Donald Trump. And they've had tons of support. You never know what's going to happen, dude. And I honestly think that it's worth a shot. Because Lilith, first of all, I think that I think from the feminist community and women that just like women's rights actually would understand this Lilith because the reason why Lilith got banned from earth, that was Adam's first wife. And the reason why she got banned was because she didn't want to submit to him. Right. Well, you know, with Lilith, they made them from the same piece of clay, right? So they Mm -hmm. were completely a hundred percent equal. And she saw herself as Adam's equal. And he didn't like that. And he didn't like that. And so he got Eve. Which they took from his rib, and she was... A Literally p- equal. <laughs> He's not really. Because you notice women have different amounts of ribs than men. I didn't know that. Yeah. So anyway, we're not equal anymore. So he didn't like having a wife who was equal. He wanted one that was lesser than and would be, you know, submit to him. Right. And Lilith was like, no. And supposedly she sprouted wings and flew off as a demon. (laughs) Or got put with like the Leviathan or something like that. Like something like that. But, um, but yeah, so like, I, I see no problem with talking about Lilith and educated people will see no problem with talking about Lilith. And honestly, it's, it's not like I'm over here, like, honoring her or any of this it was like it's freaking mythology you weirdos yeah and honestly i don't have any desire to be a politician my thing was we have a problem yeah we have a problem and no one's running against her for 28 years no one ran against her so if i do nothing i'm part of the problem right that's it and all i'm gonna do is try to not let her be part of the problem anymore and I honestly I hope someone else runs so I don't have to because I like what I do for a living and I don't want to like infringe on that yeah but I will not be part of the problem right so but but moral of the story you were upset because the guy was right and it resonated and you were feeling that way yes And then I got mad. Yeah. So that's, I mean, and that's another thing. Like I've talked several times very openly in our group about how my dad doesn't believe in what I do. And my dad thinks I scam people for a living. And one time I gave him a spirit reading that I couldn't have possibly known. That's never been discussed in our family. And he didn't talk to me for three weeks because that freaked him out. And uh, he continues to just believe his own thing. Does it bother me? No. He supports me. He likes that I have my own business. He likes that I am successful in doing something with my life. He supports everything I do. He doesn't believe in what I do. He doesn't have to. Right. It doesn't bother me because I believe in what I do. And I know that there's no way that I could possibly just come up with this shit. Like, there's no way. And as accurate as it is, like, and I even still doubt myself sometimes. Like, I posted a comment this morning on a picture And I was like, oh, God, I really hope this hits. I hope I'm not wrong, like, publicly, like, right in the group. And and it validated perfectly. And there's just no way that I could come up with that because me and this girl were not friends on Facebook. I couldn't see any of her stuff. And she was just like, oh, my God, this is so accurate. I much prefer doing readings for strangers because I'm, like, always afraid I'm going to, like, add my own shit because I know them personally. I, whenever I know someone personally, I specifically ask for things that I couldn't know. And a lot of the times that works. Yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I, but my conscious mind will be like, no, I would know that if that was the case. And then I say it and the person's like, oh my God, I never even told you that. And I was like, I thought I was wrong because I could have sworn you would have told me that. (laughs) Like, 
Yeah. So I mean, yeah, doing strangers is easier, and I mean that. <laughs> I mean that in a not perverted way. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it's the latte <laughs> um but yeah yeah like fear fear is normal but you gotta overcome it to take the actions you gotta get in this space of creation because what we're learning is life is basically like a dream and you can just do whatever you want do whatever you want as long as you believe because okay just just to put this out there i know these people have fans and you're gonna send me hate mail that's fine Justin Bieber and Cardi B, okay? These people were nobody. And yet, look at look at them now. Look nobody. Them. Justin nobody. Bieber made a YouTube video. Right? He made and a YouTube so, video. If you believe that whatever you're trying to accomplish is for you, it will happen. I mean, Cardi B was a stripper who was robbing people. And now she makes billions, right? So, dude. And she can't even talk. She can't even speak, and yet, so if Cardi B cannot speak, but yet make billions of dollars, you can do whatever you want to do, but you have to believe it's yours. Yes. And you know, you know, I spent the better half of my life, I'm 29 years old, I've spent the better half of my life trying so hard to do so much, trying to be the perfect mom, trying to get my mother-in-law's approval, trying to make enough money to support my kids without a college degree, trying to, like, I was a stripper. I even robbed someone once. Like, I know that life, and I know how hard it is to tell your brain that you can do better because it's easy, quote-unquote. It's easy. It's easy to go to a club and leave with a bunch of money, and it's not easy to work a bunch of hours and not even make what you made in a night. It's fucking really hard to get to that point and I spent a lot of my life trying and here I am now and I literally said today like I was downstairs talking to Kevin and I was like I just cut off all my hair I can dye it I can do whatever the fuck I want I can just do whatever I want I don't have to do anything I don't want to do and that's pretty freaking powerful because I literally used to think like as a stripper I had to do things I didn't want to do for money and then I would go to work and I'd be like, I have to do things I don't want to do for money. Once you get to the point where you know you have a choice and it's all your choice, it's very empowering. It's so powerful. I literally just have like all of this power right now. And I'm like, I can do whatever I want to do. I looked up prices to go to Arizona. You, only, you I only need $300 and I can go to Arizona for the weekend. I can see the freaking Grand Canyon. I can do whatever I want to do. Yep. That's crazy. But it's not. But it's not. <laughs> you are in control of manifesting anything you want. Like what if we what if everyone just broke out of what they should be doing and just did what felt good? Just Except know. for killing people. Don't do that. But <laughs> this is my weekend plan. <laughs> Leave Nancy alone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, yeah, I mean, once you just own it, own your stuff and own what you want to do and go for it. Be Cardi B and Justin Bieber. You know? Life is literally a dream that you can create. It's literally, you know, last week, listen to this is, this shit is crazy. Last week on Saturday, no, two weeks ago on Saturday, it was, it was the day before the first day of the week. I said, I need to make $2,000 this week. By Sunday, I hit like 2100 the next day. I was like, this is crazy. This yes. is literally crazy. I literally just said, this is what I want. And then I got it. Yep. And I knew that I could make it. I didn't know how. But how is important. Don't stress the how. That's something that we should definitely say. You can't. Right choose how it comes like there's been so many times that we've set income goals and our business alone didn't hit those goals but other crazy shit happened and we hit the goals right so you can't stress the how you just place your order yep and believe it's yours just just know know it's yours and that's that's all you have to do make room for it declutter make room for it set your intentions know it's yours Take your action, 
and then wait for it to happen. Yeah. D take the actions. You got to take the actions. That's the thing. Like I play the lottery just in case. Cause that's a little action, you know, that's yeah. a little action, but, um, other things that you can do. Like we started our business on free trials. <laughs> we started our business on free trials. Like, uh, the website platform we used had a 30 day free trial. We started our business on free trials, got everything up on there, got a group established, got in front of people. We took actions every day. We made content every day. We took at least three actions every single day. And we have never had to pay out of pocket for our business. On top of that, because we provide services, what we do make is profit. Yep. So there's always ways to plant seeds and we work virtually. We can literally like, I was, I was going to go see my mom in West Virginia and all I had to do was take my computer. I didn't even have to miss work. Nope. And I mean, it makes it a little bit stressing, but yeah, at the same time, it's, it's good. It's, it's, it's freeing because you can go and be anywhere. You can you do whatever you want whatever you, you want. can literally create your life to do whatever you want. Like we can literally do whatever we want. Yeah. And that's so, it's so powerful. And people need to know about this. <laughs> people need to know about this. I had a guy um, messaging me a couple days ago and he was like, Oh, it must be hard to find X, Y, Z. I know you can't do this. And I was like, you know, you're, you're spouting a lot of limiting beliefs. Do you know the law of attraction? Because I'm not having a hard time. So I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, right. I was like, I'm. I, you're telling me a lot of stuff is hard that I'm finding pretty fucking simple. So I don't know what you're trying to do over there, but it's not working for you, buddy. <laughs> right, right. You know, it's funny. Brian wanted to take his birthday off, and he's like, "Well, I just, I, I won't because we really, you know, we can't afford to have a day off work." And I was like, "Just no, your that's, birthday off. That's self investment." Right? I go, take your birthday off. The money will come in another way. Yeah. And he's like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. Well, I talked him into it. He did it. And when he went to pick up his paycheck on Friday, he had gotten a raise he didn't know of. And the extra money was already in the paycheck. See? So, that's <laughs> self-investment. Self-investment is important. Because oftentimes we want other people to give us things that we don't give ourselves. And this shows, this shows a lot. Like in the coaching industry, they say you should be investing in a coach if you are a coach. And this is because you don't want to expect other people to do something for you that you won't do for yourself. Like don't expect people to invest in you if you won't invest in yourself. Um, and that's, that's really what it comes down to. And it doesn't even have to be just hiring a coach, investing in yourself. Like I remember when I, I would invest in thousands of dollars into a coach because I knew it was an investment in myself and my business. But when it came to my weight loss, I wouldn't invest in a gym or a program. And I was like, why am I not investing in this? Like, why won't I make that investment? And investments do so much. They hold you accountable. They hold you accountable. They give you love. It's you loving yourself, like taking a day off. That's so important. It's yeah. so important. I like how this morning it was funny. Well, last night, I guess it was last night. Um, we have both decided to um, do a weight loss competition with each other, friendly competition. But at the same time, last night, I was like, hey, do you think we could postpone our recording? I want to go get my hair done. <laughs> and she's like, sure, let's postpone it a little longer because I'm going to get my hair done. So here we both were investing in ourselves. So that we were ready for this whole transformation. Do you know how many times that's actually happened to me where I've wanted a day off and I've had a client that day and then I've hit up the client like, do you want to reschedule? And she's like, oh, thank God. <laughs> like, I really do. And it's, you know, when you're a lot of the times when you're feeling the urge to do a self-investment, like a day off or a day of something, whoever is accountable to like meeting you or whatever, they're cool with it too. They need that day too. And that's happened to me so many times, like, um, with clients and then with you, with the hair thing, like we record, we're recording a little bit late today and you were like, I want to get my hair done. And I was like, Oh cool. I had a hair appointment too. <laughs> like, you know, like that's, that's the, the synchronicity of self-investment that it really, 
you build up in your head this, I can't do this because there will be consequences, but it's really just in your head and you're, you're not going to know unless you communicate. That's true. And I am, I'm really strict on myself. Like if I make a commitment, I am like really strict with it. So when I was texting you last night about moving our recording time, I was going to add, but it's cool if you don't want to. <laughs> no. And you know what? I had forgot that we even set that time. Yeah. So I had, for, even if I didn't have a hair appointment, I totally forgot that we actually set a weekly time. It, did, it wasn't there anymore. So I wouldn't have even known. <laughs> I'm like the easiest business partner ever. I just like, don't even know what you're doing. And it's fine. <laughs> I've got alarms going off. (laughs) Dude, I'm the person that I set an alarm for my kid's therapist every week. I set it five minutes before the appointment. In that five minutes, I forget, and he texts me every week. (laughs) The alarm goes off, and I'm like, okay, guys, therapy, five minutes, and then I start cooking. And then ten minutes after the time, he's like, hey, I'm on. Where are you? Every single week. (laughs) I'm so scatterbrained. I need to work on that. I'm going to put that on my affirmations. My brain is not scattered. <laughs> there you go. Okay, affirmation, I have a B cup. I've never had a B cup. <laughs> Dude, you should start saying that affirmation. What if you get like a pro bono reduction? I'm going to do that. Because that if so I cool. went in for a reduction, I would just have a nipple. Maybe two nipples. <laughs> That's all I would have. Matter of fact, you could cut them all off, and I saw that guy tattoo them on the other day, and I was like, Damn. They look real! Yeah, and then I don't have to worry about poking through a shirt. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Just get some stickers. I like that, because I'm like a sports bra person, and that's a big problem for me. Yeah. Sometimes I take the padding out of bathing suits, slide it right in there. <laughs> padding that. Got a new journal. Yeah. All right, guys. Well, we have the moon subscription circles this week. We have the spirit circle tonight, the moon tomorrow. I'm doing a develop your psychic senses workshop on Thursday. I'm going to drop all those links in the show notes in case you want to check them out. You can still get a free month of the moon subscription circle in code trial moon in the listing. All right. You guys have a great week. Have an amazing week. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.